Well, hello everyone. I hope you're doing okay. Welcome to another Saturday slot. In our reading of the Bible of the year, we are in interesting times. Last week, I spoke at length of some of the Psalms of David. And for the last couple of weeks, we've been alternating between the books of Samuel and Psalms. A number of beautiful and important Psalms have been set for today, but I thought it might be good to look at tomorrow's readings instead because we very often miss out Sunday's readings. And the, the books for tomorrow, or the chapters for tomorrow, are in the first book of Chronicles. They seem a strange choice as they are in fact the start of nine chapters of genealogy. And on first looking, it just looks like a list of names. There are lists and lists of historical records and family trees from Adam right through to Abraham and on to Israel and his sons. The chronicler, the unknown writer of the book of history, has great stories to tell and powerful lessons to teach. And it's in this way that he's chosen to introduce them, not in a narrative way, but by including a number of family trees with hundreds of proper names. And just out of interest, in chapter one alone, there are 200 names. Now the series of family trees draw attention to their common roots, showing the nature and unity which all the individual family trees have grown upward. Many Old Testament passages emphasize that God's dealings with Israel were handed down from generation to generation. And so the first book of Chronicles does not inform us of things we and the early readers don't know, but actually interprets and demonstrates application through giving the inner meaning, the spiritual message of Israel's history by careful editing. So throughout these first two chapters, we find not only the lists of names, but a variety of miniature portraits, just little bits of information and odd incidents woven into the genealogy. For example, Chapter 1, verse 19, in the section about the Semites, we read, Two sons were born to Eber, one was named Peleg, which actually means division, because in his time the land was divided. And then later on in verse 50, when Baal Hanan died, Hadad succeeded him as king. His city was named Pau, and his wife's name was Mehetabal, and Hadad also died. In chapter 2, verse 7, when we are reading all about Israel's sons, we read about the son of Carmi. Akar, who brought trouble on Israel by violating the ban on taking devoted things. There are many, many more. But these little nuggets of interest, I suppose, we could compare it to, say, reading in our history books, a list of our kings of England. And at the side of Henry VIII is added the one who had six wives. It sort of helps with the understanding of who that person was and the importance of that person within the family tree. There are lots of connections too, and these little facts give us clues to those connections, especially family connections. The way the name lists are designed, it's plain to see the father to son connection, where the generations are listed through one man's line. For example, from Adam to Noah, or from Solomon to Josiah. There are also lists with different connections, such as brothers, tribes, and peoples unrelated, but including consecutive kings. 
possibly not always genealogical descent, but always some kind of sequence. And these little pen portraits of interest impress how these records belong to a historical continuum. Tracing connections demonstrates how the strength of the family tree is in its continuity and it illustrates the unchanging principles of God's dealings with his people. The people who will become part of this book are real flesh and blood people. And though we may call them distant ancestors, Chronicles suggests they are our fathers. I wonder how you feel about that. I wonder how far back you can trace your family tree. I know some people are really interested and have gone back many, many centuries, but I doubt if many have gone back thousands of years. Well, if we look back to the earlier books that outlined their importance in Israelite history, we might have expected Abraham and Moses to be significant figures in these lists in Chronicles too. Yet, they only appear as names on the lists. Instead, we notice that other points of emphasis David, of course, with his family and others of his relatives within the tribe of Judah. And then Israel, Jacob, but no, mostly known as Israel. And the detailed genealogies of his 12 sons and tribes. And then we cannot fail to notice right at the root of the tree is the name of Adam. We must acknowledge the way that Chronicles is concerned with the practical outworking and response to the grace of God. Because of, as descendants of David, we are to be the present day version of his kingdom. As descendants of Israel, we are to live as the modern day equivalent of his family. And as descendants of Adam, we are the true humanity. The model which the first book of Chronicles develops in most detail is the model of the kingdom, the people of God. Going from root to topmost leaf, from Adam to ourselves, we are one continuous entity. Now, reading the book Unlocking the Bible by David Pawson, he uses some headings which helped me understand the need and purpose for the beginning of Chronicles with all the genealogy. He uses three R's to show how the people returned from exile and how this genealogy was so important. There are roots, royalty and religion. So who were the people? Well, they were a rooted people. Their roots stretched back to Adam and God had been controlling their history. They belonged to God and he had singled them out from the whole human race. What were they? Well, they were a royal people. They were a royal people with their own king. Now God was telling the people, you, are a royal priesthood. The royal line has been preserved and you're going to be a kingdom again. So why were they there? Well, they were a religious people. They were God's chosen people and their worship of God was absolutely central to their identity as a people. And when they returned, they were going to rebuild the temple and worship was to be re-established after the pattern of Moses. Now, another theme that we can perhaps pick up, at and pick up on at a later stage is the Christian application. How the themes of Chronicles were picked up in the life of Christ. How Christ was born in the royal line of David and how he was the fulfillment of Israel's religious hopes. 
So as we read on in the, the two books of Chronicles, I'm sure we will see the importance of this. So not just a list of names, but quite interesting parts to pick up on. So let us pray. O oh, gracious and holy Lord, give us all wisdom to perceive you, intelligence to understand you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, and a heart to meditate upon you, through the power of the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so until next time, keep safe, enjoy the weather, and please enjoy the relaxation of our laws and rules at this time. Make the most of life. Goodbye.